Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, today we celebrate the feast of St. James the Greater. He was the son of Zebedee, and he and his younger brother John were natives of Galilee and fishermen when they were called by Jesus to follow him as they were mending their nets with their father in a fishing boat on Lake Genesareth. They, they were with Jesus when he cured Peter's mother-in-law at the house of Peter and Andrew, and they asked Christ if they could sit on either side of him in his glory and assured them they could drink of his cup. They were nicknamed Boranges, the sons of thunder, by Jesus, probably on the occasion when they asked Jesus if they should ask heaven to strike the inhospitable Samaritans with fire. James was with Peter and John at the raising of Jarius' daughter from the dead, and the three of them were the only apostles at the transfiguration and the agony at Gethsemane. James was the first of the apostles to be martyred when he was beheaded in Jerusalem by Herod Agrippa. And also he preached in Spain before his martyrdom, and a Spanish tradition had his body translated to Santiago de Campostela in Spain, which is one of the great pilgrimage centers in the world, and he is the patron saint of Spain. So St. James the Greater, for your apostolic zeal and fervor, we ask you to please, please pray for us on behalf of your friend Jesus today. Let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, bless us with the wisdom to praise you in spirit and in truth, so that by following your holy will, we may gain eternal salvation. Amen. And dear brothers and sisters, let us take a moment and confess our sins to God in ways that we have failed him and our neighbor in thought word, deed, and omission, so that we may worthily participate in this holy sacrifice. Please now make an examination of your conscience. Let's say together the second form of the Confidior found on page 66. I confess to Almighty God in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned through my own fault, in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done or failed to do. I ask the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. For your penance, I would ask you to do an act of kindness for someone else sometime in the next few days. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And may our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me, I absolve you from all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <coughs> the testing of your faith produces perseverance, and let perseverance be perfect, so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Blessed is the man who perseveres in temptation, for when he has been proved, he will receive the crown of life. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Christ eleison, Christ eleison. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. 
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. God our Father, as St. James the Greater was the first of the apostles to gain the martyr's crown, grant that his prayers continually intercede on our behalf in heaven. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we hold this treasure in earthen vessels that the surpassing power may be of God and not from us. We are afflicted in every way, but not constrained, perplexed, but not given to despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed always carrying about in the body the dying Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our body. For we who live are constantly being given up to death for the sake of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life in you. Since then, we have the same spirit of faith According to what is written, I believed, therefore I spoke. We too believe and therefore speak, knowing that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and place us with you in his presence. Everything indeed is for you, so that the grace bestowed in abundance on more and more people may cause the thanksgiving to overflow for the glory of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response is, those who sow in tears shall reap rejoicing. Those who sow in tears shall reap rejoicing. When the Lord brought back the captives of Zion, we were like men dreaming. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with rejoicing. Those who sow in tears shall reap rejoicing. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. We are glad indeed. Those who sow in tears shall reap rejoicing. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the torrents in the southern desert. Those that sow in tears shall reap rejoicing. Those that so who sow in tears shall reap rejoicing. Although they go forth weeping, carrying the seed to be sown, they shall come back rejoicing, carrying their sheaves. Those who sow in tears shall reap rejoicing. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. I chose you from the world to go and bear fruit that will last, says the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. May Almighty God cleanse my heart and my lips that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. The mother of the sons of Zebedee approached Jesus with her sons and did him homage, wishing to ask him for something. He said to her, What do you wish? She answered him, Command that these two sons of mine sit, one at your right, the other at your left in your kingdom. Jesus said in reply, you do not know what you are asking. Can you drink the chalice that I am going to drink? They said to him, we can. He replied, my chalice you will indeed drink. But to sit at my right and my left, this is not mine to give, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared by my father. When the ten heard this, they became indignant at the two brothers. But Jesus summoned them and said, you know that the rulers of Gentiles lord it over them, and the great ones make their authority over them felt. But it shall not be so among you. Rather, whoever wishes to be great among you shall be your servant. Whoever wishes to be first among you shall be your slave. Just so, the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. 
So my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, on this joyful day when we remember the martyrdom of St. James the Greater, because there were two James, James the Lesser and James the Greater, James the Greater was the brother of John who ended up being the one not martyred, <laughs> the only apostle who was not martyred. And yet James was the first one to be martyred. Interesting how that goes. And here we have in our gospel a mom who's Jewish, Jewish mom, they have a reputation. She goes up right to Jesus, the Son of God, the Savior of the world, and tells him, command these two sons of mine, sit one at your right and the other at your left in your kingdom. I think that is the classic definition of the word chutzpah. And <laughs> Jesus, so kind, you don't know what you're asking. You don't know what you're asking. Because he knows what he is going to have to endure for us in not too long of a time from this episode. And they said they can drink the chalice he's going to drink. And indeed, James was the first one after Jesus to suffer martyrdom. The first of the apostles, anyway. Of course, Stephen was the first martyr, but James was the first apostle to be martyred by Herod Agrippa, as we heard at the very beginning of Mass. And then he goes in to describing, describing servant leadership, which is indeed the best type of leadership. When, if we think about it, the best leaders that we've had in our lives, we think over our whole lives, we've probably encountered different types of leaders, bosses, teachers, whatever. The leaders who have been the ones who are dictatorial, who have been commanding, telling us what to do. What kind of reaction does that give when we're told what to do, especially when we don't agree with it? But even if we do agree with it, we might disagree with the way it's done. We want to rebel against it, right? We want to rebel against it. That's the type of leadership Satan has. Now, for Jesus, the one who wants to be great among you, the leader among you, should be the one who's the most servile, it's the one who does the most for you, the one who loves you the most. Think about that. Our classic definition of love, which we keep going back to, is wanting the best for the other without regard to personal cost. The one who does that most is the best leader. So sometimes, if we think back, we can think of perhaps leaders, bosses, pastors, whatever, that we've had that would bend over backwards for us, that go out of their way to make us, make our lives, our jobs, whatever it may be, a little bit easier, a little bit better, helping us out when we need it. Okay, kind of boss, is that one that you would go to the ends of the earth for? Am I right? So, what do we do? What do we do with that? Because there's a part of us that lives in fear of the dictator. That if we don't do what they tell us to do, there'll be repercussions. But that's only to a limited extent because we can only do things that affect us in their realm, not in, the, not in the realm of God. They can't touch our souls unless we let them. The servant leader, the one who gives up everything, the one who sacrifices for our betterment, that's the one we want to follow, right? Not the one that wants the position because of power, prestige, money, you name it, the one who gives up power, prestige, and money in order to be our leader. That's what Jesus did. The Son of God, the Son of God, became a human being so that we could be saved. He gave up everything. He gave up everything. He gave up his human life. He suffered like we suffer. He had flesh and bone just like us. Think about the nails on his hands and feet. 
the crown of thorns, the whip 39 times, peeling the skin and muscle off his back before he went on the cross. He gave that up, his comfort for us, for you, for me. That is servant leadership to the extreme. How much more so should we reflect that in the way we lead others or in the leaders that we seek out for ourselves? Do we want the ones that are always going to tell us what to do and put us in fear? Or do we want the ones that are going to give us, give up something for us so that we can be better off? You should keep that in mind anytime that we're looking for a leader, be it in business, be it in our personal lives, be it in our political realm. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> Let us now stand and turn to page 71 and say together the creed that unites us all as Christians. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. <coughs> of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through Him all things were made. For us and for our salvation He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit He was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. Trusting that God hears and answers our prayers, let us join in offering our petitions to the Lord. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For Prime Bishop Anthony, Father Senior Charles, and all, the pra and all pastors and priests and deacons, that they may lead to faith, lead in faith, and serve in love the flock entrusted to their care. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For then to war, violence, and hatred, that God's peace and compassion may fill every corner of the world. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For the safe travels of all who are on vacation from our parish, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have strayed from the practice of the faith, that the Holy Spirit may grant in them a new desire for Christ, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For all the sick and their caregivers, especially those in our parish prayer list, that they may find strength and endurance in the healing love of Christ, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For all the intentions we hold deep in the silence of our hearts. Pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the faithful departed and those who will die today, that they may dwell in the Lord's house forever, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, shepherd of souls, guide us on your path of peace. Hear our prayers, both spoken and unspoken, and in your mercy grant what we need. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. King Herod laid hands upon some members of the church to harm them. He had James, the brother of John, killed by the sword. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Dear goodness, we have this bread to offer, which earth has given, and human hands have made. May it become for us the bread of life.
by the mystery of this wine and water, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands, may it become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Come, Holy Spirit, and bless this sacrifice which we have prepared for the glory of your holy name. Lord, wash away my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. Receive this offering, most holy trinity, which we make in memory of the passion, resurrection, and ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ, and in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints. May they whose memory we honor on earth intercede for us in heaven. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good, for the benefit of his holy church. Gracious Father, as St. James the Greater left all to follow your Son, receive our gifts and help us rely only on you. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. We humbly beg you, the only high priest of your church, never to abandon your flock, but through your blessed apostles and their lawful successors, the Catholic bishops, safeguard it with a lasting care. May those upon whom you bestow the shepherding, teaching, and guidance of the church be courageous, zealous, and filled with apostolic favor. May they teach the faithful your truth, forgive their sins, and unite them with you. Therefore, with the angels and archangels, with all the saints in the entire church, we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy sacrifice of mass continues with Eucharistic prayer 5. This is found on page 92 if you're following along. Blessed are you, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Father of mercy and God of all consolation. For you so loved the world that you gave your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He then established a lasting memorial of your salvation. On the evening in which he willingly surrendered himself, he took bread, gave you thanks, blessed it, and broke it, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which is given for you. When supper had ended, he took the cup. In the same way, he gave you thanks and blessed it, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. So we recall before you, Father, the incarnation of your Son, his words and deeds, how he humbled himself and obediently accepted death, even death on the cross. Therefore, you have raised him up and given him a name which is above every name, so that in heaven and under the earth, every knee shall bow and every tongue proclaim to the glory of God the Father, Jesus Christ is Lord. We offer the sacrifice of your Son before you, Father, with praise and thanksgiving and ask that you accept this oblation. Send your Holy Spirit and fill these gifts with his life-giving power that they may be for us the body and blood of your dearly beloved Son. Grant that the bread which we break may be the body of our Lord, and the cup over which we give thanks may be one with the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The company of Mary, the mother of God, with your apostles and martyrs, holy will abroad, and all the saints. 
Louis Anthony, our prime bishop, and Charles, our administrator, and with all bishops, priests, and deacons, as well as your whole church, we praise and glorify you and look forward to the coming of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Let's pray together with confidence to the Father in the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Come a blessing which we bless. Is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread which we break. Is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. May the union of divinity and humanity in Jesus Christ bring us sanctification and eternal life. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church. Grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. On you stay, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. On you stay, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. On you stay, qui tolis peccata mundi, dona nobis pacem. Let's say together the first, the second form of the confidier found on the second communion prayer found on page 98. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for my judgment or condemnation, for I am unworthy to receive this great sacrament. For your loving kindness may it become my safeguard and healing remedy. My saving master, awaken in me a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make me your willing servant, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite me entirely with you, my Lord and my God. I will take the bread of heaven and call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring me to everlasting life. May the blood of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Please join me now in the act of spiritual communion. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Flame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen. <coughs> Lord, may I possess with a pure heart that which I have taken as food. May the gift I have received bring me healing and strength now and forever. You who have followed me in the new age, when the Son of Man is seated on his throne of glory, will yourself sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. 
Let us pray. Lord our God, you called St. James the Greater to be a fisher of men. Strengthened by your Holy Eucharist, may we follow this first martyred apostle's example, giving our lives over to the harvesting of souls for your heavenly kingdom. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. In these perilous days, please join me now in the prayer of St. Michael. Holy Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and to you, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who wander through the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Please join me now in prayer for peace with the prayer of St. Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. And divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, thank you for joining us for our Holy Mass today and this week. We hope that you can join us on Saturday at 5 p.m. Central Daylight Time for the Vigil, the 17th Sunday Ordinary Time, and it's Sunday at 9 a.m. Central Daylight Time for the 17th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Hope that you have a wonderful day, wonderful weekend. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Remain in the state of grace. Fight evil where we find it. Spread joy and the word of God wherever you go. For all the saints who from their labors rest, Thou who by faith before the world confess, Thy name, O Jesus, be forever blessed. Alleluia, alleluia. Thou wast their rock, their fortress, and their might. Thou, Lord, their captain in the well-fought fight. Thou in the darkness drew their one true light. Alleluia, alleluia. <laughs>